Um, hi, this is a demo video of the work that's been accomplished during the H2 Project's Work Cycle 2, Sprint 2. So there are a number of updates that have been done to the dashboard. One of those is that we've implemented title length restrictions um, or display restrictions. So for example, this title here is a really long title. And once it reaches a certain number of characters, we replace those characters with an ellipses. And then when you uh, mouse over this title, you can see the entire title. And that makes the display a little more compact for this deposits in progress section on the dashboard. Another addition to the Deposits in Progress section is that we've added these notations here on the right that indicate what the status is for each of these items. We've also implemented the Collections in Progress section for the dashboard. So this will display only for managers who have collections that are in a draft state as well. The approval section here, this has been here, but it was displaying only for individuals who were explicitly called out as reviewers on a collection and not for the managers on that collection if they weren't listed as reviewers. So this is now displaying for all managers on a collection as well, whether or not they are explicitly listed as reviewers. One more thing here is that when you have um, more than four items in a collection, we have the CL deposits that links you to the page that has all of the deposits listed. And we now have set this so that the items that display in this table are the four most recent items to have been created or modified in the collection. And we've also made a fix so that auto updates, so when a, an item is deposited and you come back to this, to this page, there'll be something spinning actually like this right here that says depositing um, that automatically updates when, um, when it's finished, when it's finished depositing. Another thing I wanted to show you is that if you, there's a change to the work type modal. So when you want to deposit something to a collection and you click the main type, we now have modified this so that you see a short list for each of these or for most of these of the, of the subtypes that users are most likely to click on. And then we have a see more options link here that displays all the things. And so users are able to make the best choice no matter what type of, of work they're depositing um, into the collection. So let's um, cancel out of this and go into an item so I can show you some changes that we've made to the work type form. So here I wanted to show you we've implemented these uh, length restrictions in the breadcrumbs as well so that the breadcrumbs don't get completely out of control with really long titles. So same as in the progress bar on the dashboard page and the mouse over shows you the full title. Another thing we've added is the ability to include a s more than one email address. So people sometimes want to do this and it's actually not a bad idea so that there are multiple people and multiple options for these email addresses, addresses to be functional longer into the future. So you can add multiple email addresses. When you select an organizational role for um, an author, this changes the entry field changes from two boxes to a single box and we've we've changed this so that it also now says organization name above this box to make it clear to you that you've chosen an organizational role another change here in the author section is that we've separated authors and contributors into two different lists so um, authors are those who will be included in the citation to the work but we've also then separated this out so there's a contributor section which are other people that you want to acknowledge as having participated in the work somehow but that wouldn't normally make it onto an author's list so this allows a little bit more precision for people in specifying authors and, and allows i think more flexibility for adding in all those contributors that you'd want to acknowledge there are a couple features in the date section that have changed. So one is that we've added approximate checkboxes to the creation dates, not the publication date, because that should be fixed. And another thing that we've changed is that in the past, um, when you added 
just years into these date sections, these date fields, and saved it, a month and a day were being appended to those when they shouldn't be. So we fixed that bug now so that when you enter 2020, it will just say 2020. Um, when you've entered a date in these fields, it will just say the dates. Um, let's see, a couple of other things. So when you come into a work, uh, into the work edit form, by default, the default citation toggle is on and you can turn that off and make changes to this if you'd like. Um, and once you do that uh, and save it, what was happening was that when you reloaded the form, the default citation was showing as on again. So we've now corrected that so that whatever the user has chosen sticks. So if you choose the default citation to be off, it will stay off as you repeatedly edit the item. So that's a bit less confusing for people. And one, I think, last thing on this form that we've done is to modify this so that this list, um, the CC um, public domain dedication and certification license was at the top of the list. And it's something that is frequently used for things like government documents, but is likely to be rarely chosen by our campus depositors. And so we moved it farther down the list so it would, would be less likely to be chosen inappropriately. Uh, so hopefully this is uh, a better spot for it uh, on the list. There's one small change we've made to the collection edit form as well. So normally you have to either require everyone to choose a particular license and you have to specify this license or you can allow the depositor to, to choose but you have to select a default license. So we're now allowing um, this form to save whether you've chosen this license or not. You can't deposit it but you can save it as a draft.